Hey, this is Ross Bain with Rule Playing Bubble Radio. This is RBPR episode 127. Uh, let's see here. Uh, mistakes are inevitable. Uh, learning new games. Very uh, apropos there. Uh, with me, not as always, is Bill, Faust, and Dan. Hello. Hi. <laughs> We're having a little variety here. Listeners uh, at home, insert your own comment about Ross's announcer voice and that flub in the title drop. Yeah. We'll give you five seconds. I <laughs> wanted some. You really want to invite that? Uh, in, They're used to it. it it's like, it's it's part of the RPPR stick. Yeah, um, it's participatory. We don't have yeah, the Tom soundboard set up yet. Yes. <laughs> well, Tom he mixes it up every time he does. It's always there's always a different line or approach that he takes to zinging me about announcer voice. It's it's different. He nice. he he, nice. he, 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 he shakes things up, and that's what it's about: shake, changing things up. You know. Right. Uh, yeah. You so w- this is what an abused spouse looks like. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh, wow. Okay, that's how the episode's gonna be. Uh, <laughs> so uh, in this episode, we're gonna be talking about the learning new role playing games, running them. Uh, the rewards and difficulties therein. Uh, but first off, we do have a bit of news. Uh, first off, uh, we have a new podcast, uh, RPPR Tabletop Yay! Tales. Uh, this is a campaign-focused uh, a- actual play uh, podcast. We're doing one campaign once a week. Uh, the and backlog was stretching into it. <laughs> the backlog was getting a little... Uh, unmanageable. So and that's Ross saying that. Yeah, because uh, we have multiple groups now, fortunately, with RPBR. Uh, so, uh, Dan, uh, you are running the first campaign right now. We have two episodes up of it uh, as we speak right now of the yes. Dresden Files. Rip my technique to shreds. <laughs> Nobody's uh, you really apparently, done that yet. Yeah, yeah there no, was. That's why I'm inviting them to do it. Yeah. There was some commentary about. The way I will learn. Uh, <laughs> Compound bow wounds versus gunshot wounds, or something like that. It was very insightful. It was. There was a lot of information there. And I think it went into a lot more detail than fate is ready to handle. So, (laughs) yeah. So, what you're saying is you're going to be bolting on some Phoenix Command? Yeah, we have it. Sure. (laughs) Yeah. Let's get that winded rule, uh, because that's what. Oh, gosh. Which one's the one with with gun calculus? Let's let's just strap it. That's the one. That's the one. All right, great. Yeah. (laughs) Nice. Uh, it's funny. Saturday night we were talking about that with one of the players in my game who's an ex-Marine. And he, oh, was, no, we, he we, wasn't, like, phased by that at oh, all. No, was that, like, why wouldn't you calculate each pellet of the load in a shotgun? <laughs> uh, no, I think we will have to get Jason, uh, different Jason, not the old Jason, but new Jason, uh, on to the uh, after hours at some point to review Phoenix Command from a technical point of view. Uh, <laughs> Uh, vis-a-vis role-playing uh, and uh, that, yeah, but that's something in the future so uh, we have Dresden Files uh, it's we got a good response so far obviously we're on iTunes now uh, I'll put Yay. it up on Google Play the other big thing uh, also all the RPPR and RPPR actual player now on Google Play if that matters to you uh, I don't even know what that is but Google Play that's Google's the store yeah it's, 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 oh, right. store. it's like iTunes store. but Google's so yeah. okay Google. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So you know Google, right? No. Okay, the one time of, that Apple got to something before Google did. Yeah. Show, oh. <laughs> show of hands, who's an Android user in here? I, I am. Everyone raised okay. their hand. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you can download it, uh, subscribe to it, rate it on iTunes uh, or whatever podcasting service uh, app you, catcher you use. Uh, and spread the word. I'll put up links on all the sites. So, hooray! Yeah, uh, and, of course, after Dresden Files Season 1, we will have Armitage Files, which uh, Bill is running. Yep. Uh, which is based on the Trail Cthulhu campaign. Yep. Uh, and we are going crazy and uh, <laughs> investigating documents in uh, the, you know, uh, Lovecraft country. So, <laughs> Things of a nature are happening. Yeah. Uh, and we'll have some anecdotes related to that in a little bit. Uh, also, want to give a news or uh, shout out to uh, the Third Wheel Podcast, Thrilling Intent. Yay, that's me! Yes, uh, that is you, uh, us, uh, along with the other cohorts. They're going to be at Gen Con as well. Yes, look uh, forward to it. Uh, we got uh, slowly our reach extends. Uh, and your your the stuff that you submitted to Gen Con has been approved, right? It has been approved. Yeah. we're running a couple panels. Uh, one of them is about uh, uh, I guess modding systems, when to make rules, when to break rules. House ruling. Yes, house ruling. Nice. Uh, and the other panel is going to be about running a tabletop show on YouTube. Uh, there aren't Ooh. very many people aside from like Critical Role, who's a big, big, big name. Uh, that really do it uh, on YouTube, at least. Tip yeah. one: Don't read the comments. <laughs> uh, no, actually, surprisingly enough, uh, I know it YouTube gets on the a, audience. Yeah, yeah, YouTube gets a really bad rap for like toxic comments, but so far everybody on our channel has been like really positive. It's, it's toxic nice. comments was the name of my high school grunge band. <laughs> Mine too. Uh, Are you guys in the same high school grunge band? But not a- the same high school. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, inter- uh, very good. Uh, we also, the RPPR, uh, we have a panel, uh, a couple panels and a meetup uh, schedule that's been approved. So we'll have that at Gen Con. Of course, we'll re- we will record that. Uh, I, I'm preparing activities for the uh, yeah. meetup as we speak. <laughs> activities? Yes. Activities. Uh-oh. Yeah, and at one point, Melissa and I were talking about trying to get a panel, but I think yeah, are life... Are you going to do that? Or I think life got in the way, and we stopped talking about it, and we also tried to figure out who we'd want to be our third person. I, I, you, we all talk. Well, I guess okay. you and her talked about that, and she and I talked about that, but you and I didn't talk about that. No, we haven't. So. Well, there or might I... still be time. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Uh, Look so. for that if that's a thing that if sounds interesting to, to you, submit. and um, it's still possible. Yeah. So I mean, if I manage to squeeze in, like... Four monsters and other childish things at the eleventh hour yeah. last year at Gen Con. I think squeezing time for a one panel would be okay. Who knows? Uh, I think it depends more on how much space they have at this point. I think they're fine doing it. They just, you know, do only we have, have so many rooms per hour available to them. Well, so. we found a restroom you can meet in. It's on the third. <laughs> Sign floor. me up. Yeah. Uh, how are the acoustics? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Sibilance. Yeah. Sibilance. Uh, it's all tile. Uh, so anyway, um, so that's it for <laughs> news. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. other things. Yeah, we'll have some of our shout outs. We'll talk about some other things uh, in a little bit. But let's get to the actual main topic. The uh, meat. The, the, the meat of the this. Uh, nope. That's Bear Swarm ripoff. We don't yeah. talk about them. Oh, oh wow. Huh? <laughs> Who? Bear Swarm, another RPG podcast that has pod faded into the sky. Oh, that rip. Man. Yeah. Rest in podcasts. There you go. Uh, so <laughs> they were um, actually sponsored, though. So good for them. Yeah. Uh, and Rob Justice, the guy behind it, uh, is now working on Seventh C along with, with John, John Wick. Wick. So yeah. he's, uh, you know, he's, kudos to him. Yeah, man. he's still doing all right. Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah. Uh, so the learning new systems. Um, <laughs> To get at the actual topic, um, I kind of been thinking about this all all year long because last year I realized that I basically didn't run anything new at all. I ran basically stuff I already knew: Eclipse Phase, Call of Cthulhu, Delta Green, which is uh, for me very similar to Call of Cthulhu. And I was true. About, yeah, so, what is you ran a lot of that? Yeah, tra- yeah, Gumshoe uh, setting setting. Well, the new Delta Green system does have some changes. True, uh, and also I did order uh, Call of Cthulhu Seventh Edition, which is coming out soon, the print version. Uh, and that has some yeah. mechanical differences. Uh, but I realized, I mean, I buy all these great RPGs, and then I don't run them. It's sort of to warp that old quote. You, yeah. you buy RPGs thinking you're buying the time to learn them and run them. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. And wow. You kind of, Oh, that's depressingly profound. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, so I realized this year I need to actually put that, that time aside. <laughs> yeah. Editing. Uh, What's that? So... <laughs> Uh, I decided to make an extra effort into learning new systems. And uh, them. Effort. I know. It is. <laughs> it's the only kind that we approve of here at RPPR. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and for me, the first one I, I learned, the first system uh, that I learned this year, new system, uh, is one that's not out yet. It's called mm-hmm. Upwind. Uh, it's being designed by Jeff Barber, who is totally cool. hipster. Ross. You probably so haven't tired. even heard of it. Uh, no, they wouldn't have heard it because Jeff Barber hasn't done the Kickstarter for it yet. So uh, Jeff Barber is the guy behind Blue Planet, uh, totally a hinge. '90s uh, sci-fi RPG, and he uh, came up with this great new system that uh, is card-based, uh, playing cards. And has a setting that's a very much like uh, kind of anime-ish, but like uh, with a bit of steampunk element, like cloud eye, you know, floating I'm in. islands. And, Count me in, and, sign me up. Uh, Skyships and all right, uh, yeah, I want to. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great system. <laughs> I, I will run it for you sometime. Yeah, uh, and it, it's I'm an, intrigued by your ideas and wish to subscribe. To and your he newsletter. actually he reached out to our podcast and said, "Hey, I'm doing this. Let me, let me. Would you be interested in playing?" And I read it. I was like, "Oh, great!" And then I got busy with the Delta Green Kickstarter. <laughs> and they're like, "Oh God, I feel horrible because I haven't helped this man with his uh, game yet." So I finally just put aside time. I ran it. Uh, the players loved it. Uh, we recorded an actual play, and he actually came. He swung by Springfield one weekend, and uh, I recorded an interview with him. He ran the game for us, um, and we had the recorded. We will post that closer to when he does his Kickstarter. But uh, it was a very engaging experience because it made me learn a lot of things about game design and like, oh wow, you could do all these cool things with a game. And Whoa. Like, um, so now I'm trying to learn more games. Uh, so like recently, I did Feng Shui too. You've seen the light. I've seen the light. Thank you. Yeah, that was um, a lot of fun. By the way, uh, like, Feng Shui too. And yeah. Oh my god. And I made mistakes, but uh, so I went around it again. Uh, and that was one of the games I got at Gen Con last year. And I was like, ooh, yep. big $60 book. I really like this. <laughs> and then I don't run it for six months. So um, 
So that's kind of my experience, and I realized uh, that, yeah, you can't just stay in... I could run Eclipse Phase on Call of Cthulhu the rest of my life, and, you know, that would be okay, but then I wouldn't have had... Feng Shui wouldn't have had this uh, uh, awesome time with uh, Upwind, which, uh, I mean, the system is really awesome in a a lot of different ways. Uh, Like, for example, instead of resolving one action at a time, you resolve an entire scene at once. Whoa. So like you what? you yeah no exactly yeah. <laughs> it kind of blew my mind like holy shit you're just like instead of like I want to hit the bad guy with my sword it's like I want to win the fight by capturing the bad guys and getting them to swear loyalty to me all right those are the stakes so do scenes just go by like yes really they fast? do yeah. okay wow yeah no it requires a totally different pacing uh, interesting it's that it, sounds really what year cool. is it <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Um, so it was a really, it, but it took a lot of time. I had to set aside time. I like I had to spend you know days just to read the playtest documents and like sort of absorb them and like what does this mean and what does this mean? And I still got things wrong, uh, obviously in the first playtest. So um, it was very challenging. Um, but I think the main point I want to get across is that it was worth the effort to do. Like, right. Um, and. So that that's my experience, and we'll, we'll get into the nuts and bolts of how to do it. But let's just the rest of you guys. Uh, who wants to go next? Talking about uh, Dan, since we talked about tabletop tales, um, you had to learn a new system. I did have to learn a new system. Like, and again, I, the statement you made earlier is very apt. Is that I bought the Dresden Files RPG books Oof. under the assumption that I would I have bought the time to learn and master the system, and I. <laughs> The entire time I between I first said, I want to do this as a campaign, and then we actually ran it. I don't know how many times I thumbed through that book. Yeah. I'll go you one better, and the reason why I let you run it instead is I had the time available, <laughs> but it was while I was working overnights and trying to learn how fate while working overnights was not a good choice. That's how I ended up reading most of the material. You're a stronger man than me. <laughs> But that was the – I needed something to keep my mind because I'm working 80 hours a week. So yeah. those were the dark times. <laughs> so it took you a while. Like up when I kind of set aside one week and just – it took a week to, to read it because there's like yeah, 40 Ross's pages of stuff. luxurious podcaster schedule. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. Uh, again, 40 pages, like not a 300-page book. Yeah. Um, two 300-page books. Yeah, two 300-page books. Oh, my God. Uh, plus, I could email the designer with any questions I want, and he would answer quickly. Like, what does this mean? Oh, it means this. And, like, also, could you write a playtest adventure for me? I don't want to – I don't know what to <laughs> – okay, here's a playtest adventure for you. Great. Fred Hicks got better shit to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so I had that luxury. Uh, so I could understand. So, that. yeah, and with all of that, in as – Mistakes are being made during the Dresden campaign, and they will continue to be made. And that's pretty much how it's going to be because it doesn't. With as many rules as there is in that book, I can't. If I waited until I had complete and total system mastery without running the game, I would never be able to run the game. And that, that's kind of interesting. Interesting. Has I mean, like, is it even possible to gain total system mastery without running the game? No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, there. <laughs> no, not so much a question. Just yeah, like it's, no. It's not really profound. Okay. You can't just you can't no. learn to ride a bike by reading a book. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, and, and like we discussed in, during the prep for this episode, it's a lot like learning as another language. Mm-hmm. Is that you know you can run rules and you can study grammar, but until you actually immerse yourself and put yourself in a position where you have to speak the language to another native speaker mm-hmm. or try to get by in the environment of that language with what you know, you're not going to get any better. You're not going to achieve any type of fluency. Yeah. Absolutely. And so uh, that, again, why the title came to be is because mistakes are inevitable. Uh, you're going to make mistakes, and that's just part of it. Um, let's see. Faust, you, you've you played a lot of new games. I so, have. Uh, uh, Red I, Markets. Yeah, uh, Red Markets. Uh, uh, check it out when it goes on to Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> Give it your money. Yeah, you should. It's yeah. cool. But no, honestly, I was only... Uh, well, I, I mean, that's not all, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, back whenever I first started showing up on RPPR was one of the... First times that I began uh, playing new systems, uh, I was pretty much like, nah, damn the rules, kind of person. Uh, Wait, before you got to RPPR or like at during RPPR? Before. Okay, before. Yeah, yeah. Before I was just like, screw the rule book. I just want to have fun. Okay. But, uh, but now I've sort of, uh, I've evolved. I've moved on beyond that childlike state. Did you use a lightning stone? Uh, no, no. This was hard. Sounds like this a water stone. Hard one. This okay. was hard one. Oh, a hard stone. Okay. 
<laughs> but no, no. I since since I've showed up on RPPR, I've played a pretty vast variety of games uh, and have been exposed to a lot. Uh, and have found that it's very, very rewarding to learn each new system uh, because they each system uh, informs the the role playing and the story uh, in their own unique way. Yeah, and that's each. yeah, that's very. It's very fascinating to me to see that for. For just comparison's sake, uh, take a, 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 a rules-heavy game kind of like Eclipse Phase, which is very like, okay, yeah, you roll your percentile dice, you do all this, uh, match your skills, and like, you've got all that going on. I will stack all the modifiers. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Stack all the modifiers. <laughs> Compare that to Ryutama, which is like, 2d6, I, I did the thing. <laughs> it, it, it's very... It... it, uh, it Changes the way the players think about the game because with uh, with with Eclipse Phase they'll be like all right all right uh, I can stack this and this and this and that and get advantage doing this uh, it becomes very like uh, not not formulaic but like they take on this very tactical tactical exactly that is exactly the word I was looking for well, I mean it's also thematic too yeah uh, no because it, it fits though yeah is what I, is what I'm getting Eclipse at. Phase is about like a post scarcity like super technologically yeah. advanced society. it's about complexity exactly and like and the rules nuance, yeah. the rules absolutely yeah. influence the players into thinking like that and with Ryutama it's a much simpler rule it's, game. A, it's like a fairy tale kind yeah of thing. it's yeah, like yeah. a Ghibli movie yeah a- and it it drives the players to act like that which I find especially interesting uh, but yeah, uh, that's my two cents. Okay. Um, so since you've been, uh, I mean, up until you were playing these games uh, with us, uh, you were playing mostly like a modified Pathfinder. Right. Uh, Pathfinder in 3.5. 3.5. Yeah, yeah. Uh, has that changed your perception of 3.5 uh, Pathfinder? Or? Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it, okay. it no, I don't, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. All right. Uh, but I definitely do view it as uh, not as fun. Okay. It's just I don't have as much fun with it. Uh because of the mechanics? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They get in the way of playing. Okay. Uh, and Rifts, too. Don't ever play Rifts. Wait, you're still pl- you, you're actively playing Rifts? Uh. <laughs> wow. I, I don't know how to interpret that sound. <laughs> Wait, what? The last time I played Rifts, it was to troll Caleb. Like, it was, <laughs> it was to because Look, I knew I, he would. You, you didn't tell me this was going to happen. No, no, no. It says in my writer there needs to be a quarantine. <laughs> right. No, yeah, I, I'm playing in a Rift campaign with some friends. Honestly, it's really fun, like, role-playing. Is and, this for a podcast or is this just normal game? Normal game? Uh, it's for a podcast thing. Okay. It's just, yeah, some friends are doing the thing. But, uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> it's Some friends really hate themselves. I don't like Rifts at all. Well, Sorry. No, I mean, no, because this kind of shares my experience. Like, I, I did start with, like, Palladium. Yeah. And, like... How's your climbing down skill? <laughs> <laughs> Repelling. Oh, my gosh. Um, and I didn't appreciate how bad the system was until, yeah. like, even third ed, like, D&D, like, oh, my God, attribute checks. You know, like, yeah. a, a, sis, a consistent skill system where everything yeah. made sense on a, a, a consistent basis. I want to like, shoot my ranged weapon. Not yeah. 50% of my ranged weapon. Not 25% of my ranged weapon. Not... Not seventy five percent. I just want to shoot the gun. Yeah, just let me shoot the gun, please. But like well, in rifts, there aren't even yeah. perception checks, like uh, a base wisdom check or spot, oh hit, you know, a spot check. So, and I'll uh, be the apologist here. Like from a fundamental construction standpoint, like third ed and three five, like they're well designed games. It's for mostly what they do. tuning issues. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, just I mean, they it, didn't check the math ahead of time. They That's didn't true. check the math ahead of time, and by the time they let all the splat books ride out, there really wasn't they a were coherent good. system left. Trying <laughs> to shut the gate after the horses well, left. Uh, well, I think the the, the it, it's not even that. Also, it's the the class balance in that spellcasters are inherent. Yeah, quadratic superior. wizards. Yeah, yeah. quadratic well, wizards, I mean, clerics, druids are inherently superior to. Monty fighters. Cook's name is on the book. Well, Monty Cook, actually, I don't think you, you can blame him uniquely for this. <laughs> I think it was a wide design decision. Fair. All right. He might have had um, some influence. And besides, um, like, even if you look at second ed, like, fighters and rogues were better balanced in second edition versus third ed. But we're getting too fine a point. Yeah, yeah. Bill, why don't you talk about some of the systems you've been learning? Because oh, you're kind of known for this in our Right. Uh, like Dying Earth, uh, of course. <laughs> don't rest your head. Uh, um, and you're running Trail of Cthulhu, yeah. which yeah, is a different yeah. experience. <laughs> Let's see. There was that half. Half a session of dogs in the vineyard. Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of the gadfly, I guess. I like yeah. to pick up and learn new things, and so um, we had a really good time with Dinner. Yeah, well, thanks. Uh, 
so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of frame this from an advice perspective. If you want to pick up and learn something new, like mm-hmm. sort of the things I go to on that, um, if you're dealing with a designer that's written any kind of design diaries or stuff like that, that's a great place to go to. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I benefited in running dying earth from listening to Ken and Robin talk about stuff because it helped me understand what the system wanted to do. And like, if there's a thing I could say, especially to a GM, but also to a player looking at a new system, like don't worry about reading the whole damn book. Uh, it's probably huge and not worth all your time. But yeah. like try to dig into it enough to you to where you can figure out what the game wants to do. Yeah, like the core like, mechanics or something. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Not just the core mechanic, but like the core activity. Yeah. Like, because if not, you can end up with a mismatch or, yeah. or like you bring your preconceptions to the table and like say you've played D&D for 10 years and you pick up Gumshoe but you just kind of wing it and you don't read it at first. You're, you're going, going to do a dungeon. Yeah. yeah you're you're <laughs> going to, you're going to do gumshoe that is trying to do D and D and that will hurt. It yeah. will hurt badly. So yeah. Well, I think, I mean, uh, you're thinking about reading the book uh, and parts of it. I think that depends on the game you're running because obviously the big textbook size books, clearly like you don't need to like I, when I was reading feng shui too, I didn't read all the, they have like 80, 90 pages of power descriptions. Right. And like, you don't need. Whoa. Yeah. Well, like, they that, have, I mean, that's good if you want it. But Across think about, 36 archetypes. Right. Which right. Okay. all you have to do for character creation is pick an archetype, give your character a name. Oh, wow. Um, that's awesome. Well, it's also, they spread it among like not only uh, martial art abilities, but sci fi abilities and fantasy abilities. So, yeah. like, they're trying to do multiple Hong Kong genres. Yeah. In one book, so that's if so you, you don't need to read raid on. one night and crouching tiger, hidden dragon the next. <laughs> yeah, use feng shui too. Uh, yeah, because they, they're, they're, the setting forward explicitly allows that, uh, and for crossover type things. Yeah, but like there are certain games that you should read from front to back, like, especially sort of the indie storytelling yeah. ones. Like uh, read every bit of fiasco. Fiasco. I was just gonna say, oh, yeah, you know, maybe fifty pages of it, uh, and you need to know everything that's in there. One example for I would also do is uh, Itris Bai, uh, which I mm-hmm. ran in a different <laughs> setting. <laughs> uh, Night Vale, but yeah, like that understanding, reading that full book gave me a sense of how to run it because they have example adventures and like uh, they explained the, the the default setting for yeah. it and it kind of like gave me oh okay this is the kind of thing it goes for this is kind of here's how to surrealist here's how to surrealist yes very very much <laughs> so, so uh, it's a fun game by the way uh, what is it Itris by uh, it's a surrealist uh, well absurdist uh, oh, role playing yeah. game I have a copy sorry of it. wrong school. Um, <laughs> Well, uh, a little crossover so between real does and absurd, tend to yeah. touch on the absurd. Right. Um, well, the Venn diagram has crossover, but it's not <laughs> one circle. True. Uh, yeah, it's like a, a beaver with a guitar on one circle, a, uh, a duck with a keyboard on the other side, and then there's a beaver with a keitar in the middle. So nice. a beaver, du- no, a, a platypus. platypus. A platypus. Yeah, yeah obviously. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I'd probably prefer the platypus with the yeah. guitar. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's the center of the event. Uh, right, because otherwise you don't get that demographic appeal with the band. Right. So, <laughs> um, so there is a lot of reward in that uh, yeah. because uh, variety is, I think, the spice of life in gaming. You don't know what you're missing until mm-hmm. – the thing is you could have be doing your D&D game for 10 years and like, oh, we're having fun, we're having fun. But it's the same kind of fun. And you, then right. you, when you try something new, it's like, holy shit, we could be doing all this. Mm-hmm. The characters are talking to each other. They have meaning. We're doing things things we haven't done Mm -hmm. and it doesn't i mean it could be more role-playing or it could be more like you find out tactical combat is more exciting so right uh you get a crunchy game and you get into something like that or like just the the like cross applicable skills you'll pick up and and insights you'll have like Mm -hmm. trying to sit down and write scenarios for trail of cthulhu all the time has made me realize that i always worked way too hard at like fantasy combat heavy games like yeah. comparatively they are a breeze to write scenarios for <laughs> yeah, they are <laughs> unless you're doing like a tomb of horror type death trap thing but that's uh, that's kind of <laughs> that you know fair unless you're jigsaw it's you know right or caleb yeah or caleb i mean if he wanted to caleb hasn't done like if I mean, he wanted to if he wanted to i mean his his death traps are more existential like you you succeed oh, but at what cost god's you know? teeth yeah exactly <laughs> uh yeah you didn't the whole death trap thing got became from no evil which is an eclipse phase campaign which had tons of the literal death traps in it wow but the entire campaign was in you know moral death trap <laughs> Playing in it meant yeah. you were already caught. Basically. <laughs> um, but, um, I, I mean, there are downsides to it. Um, 
there are downsides to Avi because obviously you have to have investment uh, mm-hmm. and you also have to, your players invest in you as a GM and yeah. stuff like that. So uh, sort of my, my thought on that uh, kind of from an economic perspective, somebody else has probably already done a lot of the heavy lifting for you nowadays. Yeah. Like I, th- I think it's legitimately said that we're living in close to a golden age of ta- tabletop RPGs. Oh yeah. Not just from a design perspective, but like the, the larger community has developed in such a way as like, if you're not dealing with a game that has just come out from Kickstarter, somebody else loves that game and has done the hard work for you already. Like cheat sheets and stuff. Yeah. Um, Usually like really boiling Usually. down. Yeah. You might, you're probably going to have to do some legwork for that, but less than you would I have mean, to otherwise. I mean, there are still games out there that don't even put PDFs of their character sheets out there. But some else probably like did. Like Wield. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, <laughs> it's not bitterness? straight out of Kickstarter. I can't believe they didn't have fucking character sheets. <laughs> he got 25 grand for that game, and he couldn't even put PDFs on his kit website. <laughs> oh, my God. Who did Wield? John Wick. The, uh, yeah, 7C okay. guy. But, uh, but yeah. Anyway, sorry. Uh, no, it's cool. I, I'm not bitter. Uh, <laughs> no, obviously like, not. No, clearly you're fine. <laughs> but there is a lot of that stuff. Like a fair amount of it is as easy as like doing a Google search yeah. inside EN sure. World. Yeah, to touch on uh, that, like or uh, RPG yeah, or, yeah, yeah. For like yeah. for for Eclipse Phase, like uh, oh, there's so much Eclipse Phase. Yeah, out there. there's a yeah. very active community. No, like uh, I was uh, some of the players that I was trying to introduce into it were just like, I don't want to read. <laughs> I don't want to read. So I was like, oh my god, fine. Let's just get a character creator. And uh, lo and behold, there's a character creator for Eclipse Phase just like for one Google search away. Yep. Um, yeah. There's a web app or an Excel sheet. Yeah. And there, and actually Eclipse Phase is very good, uh, fortunate in that there are tons of really good pregens you can use. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they didn't want to be pregens. They wanted to be special snowflakes. Oh my god. But, but they, they were that want... much of special snowflakes? Uh-huh. To be honest, it panned out really well. Okay. It is a good system for special they snowflakes. They wanted yeah. to be special snowflakes, They but they didn't want to read on how to be special? Look, man. I run with a complicated group. <laughs> okay, so I'm just sitting there thinking, it's just like, I'm trying to see who this is like in our group, but I... Don't. Don't do it. It's not a good choice. Don't don't go down that path. It's dark. They don't ever listen to the episodes anyway, so yeah. you're safe, but it's dark. This is true. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, w- I will give one, like, preemptive shout-out here. Someone mm. I found who does, like, exceptional work when he like finds games he's interested in is a guy named Justin Alexander who blogs at the Alexandrian.net. Mm-hmm. Um, like has an eight page, like that trail of Cthulhu <coughs> cheat sheet that I've been like, oh, yeah, yeah. flipping around since, since uh, masks came from him. And like, he's that kind of, you know, just a mensch of a guy that like, if he hmm. takes an interest in a system, he wants other people to be interested and oh. knows that simplifying it is the way to do that. Yeah. His, his articles are pretty good too. Um, in terms of learning uh, a new system uh, or approaching it in term- and also getting the players ready to go, like, what kind of approach do you do? So, like, for Upwind, I read the system. Uh, I talked to the designer. I was very lucky in that respect. Or for Feng Shui, too. I, I read the rules, yeah. the core rules, uh, and I ignored a lot of the stuff because, mm-hmm. uh, again, it didn't apply to me. Because then what I, I kept it – I decided I was going to take a very simple approach, just modern day – no magic, no sci-fi stuff. Just like huh. a Hong Kong shoot 'em up, you know, like nice. martial arts and gunfights, and like that nice. would be it. And it and it worked out for the the one game I did run of it. I I played it more of it soon, uh, yeah. whenever I get a chance. But um, that was my approach was to do like, and I did that for Eclipse Phase as well, which was do kind of a tutorial adventure. Like here are the mm-hmm. concepts, here are the mechanics. Yeah. Here's how mesh hacking works. Here's how simul space stuff works. Here's how combat. Here's some goons to shoot, you know, and then kind of build up in complexity. And so it kind of kind of did like a whole tutorial adventure. Uh, and then like the Feng Shui 2 thing was just literally a two-hour fight. But that's the premise. <laughs> that was the premise of the game, essentially. Okay. It's, and in, it's a Hong Kong action movie. Nice. In, in fairness to those of you who yeah. are thinking of like two-hour D&D fights where it's roll your uh, D20, 20, 20 minutes later, do it again. Yeah. Like, I don't think there was a five-minute turn to be had. Like, and, and they move very fast. through like 50 mooks. Uh, 15 <laughs> mooks and three named characters. Uh, okay. Four named characters. Oh, wow. Yeah. But like... It's one of those systems that explicitly wants you to describe things cinematically. Okay. So it's it John Woo. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that it's is the yeah, wooist form. The wooist. The wooist. The wooist okay. So that was my approach. You guys take a different approach. I mean, like Dan for Dresden Files. I mean, you had the vignettes that for one thing, which was well. That's part of the, that's how character creation in the books 
So you followed the book pretty closely. And the only thing that we didn't really do in the book is I didn't sit down and force you guys to come up with <laughs> scene descriptions for various locations around Supernatural Springfield. I'll go ahead and say that I actually missed that. <laughs> I, hey, I tried to get people to like write up summaries of the adventures so that Ross could use them for oh, tags yeah. later. And I even promised bonus fate points for those. Who did it? Oh, yeah. Well, Silence. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. Eric did it once. But that's different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, this first week you're going to have to help me because this is the first uh, Team Face game uh-huh. that's coming up. So I, I... The first Team Face game is we open it with vignettes on Eric. Okay. So, uh, But yeah, like the Team Guard ones, I was there. So I can kind of like, oh, yeah, we did that thing in this episode. And I can kind of fake it. But for the games I wasn't there, I'm not going to listen to a three-hour game just to write a show note to post it online. That's why I was trying yeah. to get people to... No, th- thank you. I tried, bro. You tried. I tried. Um, so you tried. So you went... By, I mean, Fate is very much... Uh, they kind of emphasize helping people to break into the game with these kind of mechanics, I right. think. Uh, was there anything else you tried? Um, um, really, no. Like I helped some people discuss their characters and tried to. It's a lot of one-on-one stuff. A lot yeah. of one-on-one stuff. You know, talking with Tom about how Redcourt Krieger is not exactly the best character, but if he wanted to do it, we could still have fun with it. <laughs> um, and then he made a better choice. And then he made Were Crocodile Krieger. So. <laughs> How, Sorry, how many, Tom. How many hours did you have to spend talking Aaron out of Techno Wizard not being a thing? I think once I... How many one, dollars in billable hours? <laughs> <laughs> it, I think it was more the once I told him that he could instead play Danny Phantom. I think that's all I had to do. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I kind of wish he was a Techno Wizard because then he wouldn't be enroaching on my special But that's so much. not a thing. I know. Well, yeah. The, well, Aaron yeah. is also the person that actually had the time, if he so choose, to read yeah. all of the books in preparation for the over. game. Yeah. And chose not to, because apparently reading on the overnight shift puts him to sleep. Well, and, and if there's a theme that's like echoing down through this episode, it's that apparently reading is very hard. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But I will say in... Also getting to the point that even when you're dealing with a system that has a whole lot of rules, like Bill's advice on figuring out what the game is trying to do, like there's a lot of things in running Fate, and this is my first time running Fate, technically the second time ever playing Fate for more than a one-shot, is a very important piece of advice from the material is only roll if the the result of failure is going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Or it could be more interesting than success. It's a good principle in general. Right. It is. Yeah. It is. And that's, um, and that's something I think I'll take with me and I have taken with me when I'm running the Patreon. I, th- I mean, that applies even like, I know when Caleb's running Delta Green, he kind of, he still applies the same thing. Like, yeah, if you're trying to pick a ha- pick the lock of an abandoned house and no one's in there, you like, yeah, eventually pick you pick it. it. Like, yeah. there's it's no time, yeah. not like risk. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah. And so, I guess this might be stepping over and crossing boundaries on <gasps> subject matter a little Gasp. bit. Gasp. Running the Patreon game, I'm adapting a third ed adventure yeah. for it. And one of the things that I've done is that I'm as I'm reading through the adventure, and I was just like, this combat says two Minotaurs are supposed to fight the PCs. Two Minotaur versus a five level five PCs is a kind of a joke, and it's just going to waste time with combat. Eh, rip it out. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's sort of the mentality I take with a lot of game systems. Like, if I think I have a grasp of, like, okay, yeah, here's the general theme of the system. Mm -hmm. Uh, If something gets in the way of of telling the story, then I'm just like, yeah, screw it. We don't need that. (laughs) Forget it. (laughs) Like, sorry to game designers. No, well... Okay, and, and I and think that's the kind caveat of feedback game designers need to hear. Though. Oh yeah. yeah. Although Ross. the caveat there like, <laughs> would probably be if you've got a group that you know is confident yeah, telling yeah. the beats of that kind of story, yeah. like go ahead. But for the less narratively like yeah. capable amongst us, and I'll raise my own hand here, like systems that try to tell a certain sto- sort of story, like that crutch is very important. Right. And see, that makes a lot of yeah. sense. Like, the system's there if you need it, but if you don't need it, then... But then, yeah, it, again, it kind of does what the theme of the game is trying to do. Like, 
fate and red markets are trying to tell two very different yeah types of right stories. yeah um i don't mean that's true do one with the like other. i don't think you'll have a bad time i mean sure there's always gonna be exceptions but most game designers would say yeah if you need a house rule something house rule something it doesn't yeah. affect me uh the main thing is house rule the main danger i think in house ruling or removing certain rules is doing it without if you don't sufficiently understand it especially if it's a brand new system uh you do something like oh let's get rid of negotiations or pay and yeah, red markets i was just right? gonna say yeah like right. let's just rip out this part without understanding oh this is a load bearing rule no, yeah. you get the job so, so, you have the job and yeah. it pays this much yeah so just sort of i don't know to continue my counterpoint not because i think you guys are wrong no, at no, all i think you're certainly advocate. right but like caveated and to kind of bring back what ross was saying like when I knew I wanted to run Armitage files, before I got into that, I sat down and found two or three good trail one shots that I could oh, yeah. do beforehand because I wanted essentially a safe space to learn how the game worked. Oh, that's a really, yeah. Like, yeah. Because yeah. so, there, there have been times I've screwed that up uh, mm-hmm. in the past. Um, yeah. And like, it's good for all the players to figure it out, but even more so, like, from a different games tell different And it gives them a chance to make characters, especially, yeah. to see yeah. how they work in the world. Because that was my biggest mistake, I think, with Tribes of Tokyo, mm-hmm. which we talk about in the postmortem. Uh, Tribes of Tokyo was uh, Knights Black Agents, okay. which is spies versus vampires in yeah. Gumshu. And as we talk about quite a bit in detail, some of the players just didn't get into it because they didn't understand the mechanics of the game very well when they made their characters. And uh, it's a pretty technical game. It's a pretty technical game. There's a lot of different ways. To, you, it, it rewards craftiness and knowing... Like I have this awesome idea where we can't fight the vampires head on. We have to we have to ambush them. We have to right. change the odds. Right. If, if you don't understand the system or the genre very well, if you yeah. can't uh, do that very well, then like you're going to get screwed over because you're oh, just like okay. So it, it doesn't do things that aren't spy games very well. Yeah. It really wants to be a techno thriller. And okay. Yeah. Otherwise, you're you can't just, just pissing up. A you tree. can't just stand. Ne- it can't be like D and D where you stand next to a vampire, you hit them, and then they hit you. Right, like, you're gonna die, and then you'll eventually win. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's totally different. Well, you'll die, and some of the players didn't understand that very well. Also, you had huh. trouble with players actually investing in the genre of the setting yeah. that you're running it in. Yeah, I was also setting it in Tokyo, and like some players were more interested in that than others. Uh, so, so you had Aaron and the not Aaron. Oh no! Well, Aaron was very interested. And Caleb was very interested in too. Okay. It was uh, mostly uh, Tom, who made the infamous <laughs> Forger Sniper, who put like, like what? you're only supposed to put like two to three points in any given ability. Uh-huh. Uh, he put like five or six points into forging, so he would be like the world's best <laughs> forger in and the then, history of the world. In the history of the world, and he was a teenager or like a 19 year old who was also a military grade sniper. Uh, that's how he allocated his character creation points. Why did you let this happen? I've yeah, because it's Tom, yeah. and it's just better to let that roll okay. than it is to challenge. He, it. He's not going okay. to actually abuse it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, wow, and yeah, that was a mistake in hindsight. So that was kind of one of the downfalls. Learning experience. Yeah, learning experience. Yeah, like mistakes run, are inevitable. Don't just yeah. start hit the ground with a campaign. Yeah. Like do the one shots first. Yeah, and that's what I did with later on with Matt and Iron Like right. I got you guys. Here's some Trail Cthulhu one shots, mm-hmm. and then oh, now we can kind of link them yeah. up into a campaign. Uh, I've actually got a question for uh, if you're starting in on a new system. Do you guys yeah. like? Uh, I think you mentioned it, but you talked with each of the players. Uh, Dan, I'm, I'm motioning at Dan for the yeah. audience at home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you mentioned uh, it's okay. A few of the few of the select members that planted webcams and rocks. Oh right, so of. like Sam. That's a fifty. <laughs> that's a, the secret fifty dollar Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you mentioned that you like got with a couple of the players or all of them and talked about like their characters and I like, tried my best to at yeah, least yeah. have a conversation with each of them before okay. some of us had hours long rambly conversations at nice. hookah bars that was fine and it I was loved great it. Oh, that's perfect that's <laughs> we, great we need to see the new hookah bar location oh did they finally move they finally moved they opened their doors last night <laughs> cross nice. top yay yay but yeah uh, that's uh, that's something that I uh, <laughs> that I do and one of the DMs DMGM whatever in my group also does uh Whenever we move into a new system or are starting a new campaign in the same system, we'll always get with each of the players and be like, "All right, what what do you? What's your vision for this character in this setting that we're going to do?" Uh, and we uh, we always make an effort to like write a quick primer on like, "Okay, this is going to be set in X city. Uh, it's going to be noir. It's going to be detective. Uh, you're going to have like noir, noir, whatever." Yeah. 
Uh, French. <laughs> it's going to be noir. And it, it means that he encountered the word by reading it, so he exactly. Be it. It's yeah. true. It just means I have a non-accent that varies. Yeah. No. No. Right. Good. Good credit right. to you for reading. Thanks. Right. But. Uh, but. Uh, basically, whenever we go into a new system or are starting something new, we come up with a primer. Like here, it's basically the back of the book. Is, is what we'll hand out so wait, to the, the players. The, the primer is for the game itself? or did... For the players to read about the setting okay. that the game is okay. set in. And then they read it? Because that, that runs counter to what you said. So how, big is it? Sure. how big is this primer? It's, it'll generally be about a half a page. Half a page. Half a page long, a sometimes words. shorter. Okay. So I mean, have... you need to get to the point where you can just do it yeah. in a series of tweets. Right? 127 right. characters or less. A haiku. Can we have <laughs> um, a uh, Let's see. Yeah. It will be noir here. <laughs> I will chase you with a gun. Read this, please, right now. There you go. <laughs> uh, that you can was also... admirable. Thank you. you. Just remember, refrigerator's five syllables. So oh, you're right. That's how you can always end one. Uh, so. But yeah, uh, we'll, we'll send up the primer, and then once they have a basic understanding of the setting... Uh, and I've told them about the system, or the other GM has told them about sure. the system, we'll be like, okay, now how do you envision yourself in the system? Mm-hmm. What's your character? What do you want to accomplish? Uh, and then we kind of like go back and forth, and sometimes we'll let them peek behind the curtain and be like, here are some plot elements. Will you, do you want to bounce off these? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. For example, in the Eclipse Phase game, uh, I had a player who was secretly working to capture the rest of the group because they were criminals. <gasps> That's... Really good for an eclipse face. Yeah, game. <laughs> and it worked out really well. It it, it, was, it went fantastically. Fuck you, Ozma. <laughs> <laughs> there's more than just Ozma, but yeah. Uh, but then above that, well, not no, Ozma. Well, no, no. There's Ozma. Yeah, Ozma's <laughs> at the top, but there's uh, so many uh, other organizations. They're at the game. top of the conspiracy. Well, I mean, not the, not, not, not with the Jovian. Jovians are on their own conspiracy, like. Anyways, <laughs> eclipse face. Uh, what? Okay, so your question is: Do we do the same thing? Or yeah. Like how do uh, we do? Well, that's the question, and also it was a statement. Like, okay. do you do the same thing? And also, here's how I do it. Okay. Yeah. And that's I, I think it's a really good way to get new players interested sure. in the system. Um, for me, it kind of depends on what I'm running. Uh, I'm not. Uh, you in the, historically when I run a game, sometimes it's like I have this idea. Do, you do whatever character is in mind. I don't care. You know, like uh, tribes of Tokyo. Like I, I didn't do as much as I should have. Uh, and that's when Ross learned. Yeah, that's when. Ross <laughs> uh, well, sometimes it worked out. Like a, a campaign earlier I did was here's a New Arcadia superhero type thing, and like everyone came up with great concepts. Nice. Uh, usually, well, what I would do it, for a campaign is I will post a primer kind of thing on the RPPR forums and be right. like. Here's and then I will email everybody. Here's the thing: uh, if you have a character idea, post it uh, concept or something like that. So we have that discussion there. So also to so the fans can see and that kind of thing, right? Uh, yeah. And comment on it, and then rip it to shreds. And the, <laughs> not, no, they don't rip. The, they don't rip things to shreds until it's actually recorded. Oh, okay. Yeah, Fair we enough. get That's gun sad. calibers wrong uh, or something like that, or drugs. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, drugs. We are terrible at uh, depicting drug usage correctly in uh, games. <laughs> we don't have much experience. It's a good thing. We should well. well yeah. two that of us is, have that is also drugs, debated in the way you might think. Yeah. <laughs> oh. um, so it kind of depends. Like for red markets, I kind of like here's I, I like that's what I did for my red markets, fallen flags. I yeah. posted that little here's fallen. Flags. Yeah, and that was great. Uh, and then I didn't ask you for your character cards. It's like yeah, do whatever you want. Like as long as he's a valid taker. It's, that's very trusting of you. Yeah, it is very trusting. Like it, and it's worked out well, mostly in the past because it's red markets. If they if the PCs did it wrong. Yeah, the Kill market them. will settle it. Um, <laughs> this, this, this is true. Oh, you, didn't, you didn't bring a gun. All you, right. you, you've just lowered the GM's opportunity cost. Congratulations. <laughs> um, I mean, there have been some campaigns that have been more focused on role playing and like individual narratives. Like yeah. uh, Iron Heroes, I ran one called The Fortunes of War, where everyone was like, you need to make money for a personal goal. So you have, you're, you're a merchant following an army. Yeah. Uh, and it's about business and building, you know. And so, like, why do you need money? Why are you risking your life? Because you, you're you barred by law from fighting as a mercenary in this army. So you, can okay. all, so you can't fight for them directly. You have to make money by selling them swords or whatever. That sounds cool. Uh, yeah. And, but so, like, why is this? Uh, and so I gave them a backstory like they were dishonored and blah, blah, blah. You and, and me both, Dan. Yeah. You and me both. And One of my greatest regrets about the last job I had was it wouldn't let me play in that campaign. <laughs> I had the yep. best character idea for it. 
Um, I was going to play the doddering old man as a hunter. I wouldn't really do anything in combat outside of give people other tokens to spend and spout pseudo wisdom. Uh, no, that would have been amazing. Yeah. You can't shake a bucket that's um, half full. Exactly. <laughs> And it worked out very well at the end because everyone had a really satisfying narrative. Nice. Uh, except for uh, David, it was kind of like, yeah, screw revenge. I'm just going to be rich. I'm rich. I'm, <laughs> the I, best I, revenge is living well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are lots of movies that say that. Kale's character got killed after getting revenge. And, uh, nice. Uh, Aaron's character, that, Aaron, the best way that Aaron could. Yeah. And Jason's... Uh, character old, Jason, old, the best Yeah. Had a religious <laughs> crisis of... Yeah. Had a crisis of faith. And yeah. Wow. Uh, which, yeah. It was nice. pretty good. Sounds like a good ending. Yeah. No, it was a very good ending. So it, 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 for me, it depends on the system and genre. And like... Yeah. So I will do the primer thing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just... And it's also for my use as well. Like, oh yeah! Here's what's super here's, helpful. Here's here's what I'm doing. Here's the bullshit I'm thinking up. I want to make sure I don't forget this bullshit, yeah, so right. I can bullshit later on it. Exactly. So, uh, exactly. Bill, sure. Um, so I mean, more coming up through the, you know the traditional version of the fantasy side. I don't know. I've kind of been crap at this in the past, mm-hmm. uh, and I've recognized that I've been crap at this in the past. Uh, but more and more, I'm finding like. I enjoy games more when that stuff is baked into it from the beginning. I mean, by the time, for instance, for the Armitage files, by the time I knew I was working from a campaign frame in the book, Uh which basically said, you know, you were somehow attached to Miskatonic University. And by the time you go with the occupational archetypes that are in there, by the time you've tacked that and a drive onto your character, you've pretty well grounded it to begin with. So that, you know, reinforces my natural yeah. laziness. <laughs> um, but like going forward, if I wanted to do something, you know, that didn't have that baked in. I mean, for instance, this is a thing that probably won't happen until like I retire. But <laughs> um, I have something that was rattling around in my brain before red market started to be being a thing because I was also trying to explain the economy of mur- murder hobos in my own brain. Hey, all right. Yeah. And I was thinking about a fantasy setting uh, that was sort of a, a mashup of the wall from Game of Thrones uh-huh. uh, with the idea of Georgia being a penal colony that you could be sentenced to transportation. Wow. <laughs> Georgia State free prison. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, you know, everyone's character would be someone who was convicted of a crime yeah. and you had to go out into the frontier beyond the boundary of the kingdom and bring back a certain, you know, gold piece value to work off nice. your debt to society. That sounds really cool. Right. With with the thing being, I definitely want you to explain to me what were you convicted of. Yeah. You know, and, and rightly wrongfully. Yeah. Yeah. Fill in the background. Yeah. yeah. Were you betrayed? All that jazz. Were you foisted by your own petard? Pretty much. Uh, um I mean for me one of the things is though, like I'm I'm kinda don't want players to do too much work for their characters at the beginning. Right. Because you uh, don't want the most interesting thing about the character to be in the past. Well, I mean right. there is there is a thing also, like sometimes a player will think of a narrative that they want for their character. They'll get stuck. And mm-hmm. well, and then like it doesn't click, but something else clicks. Like yeah. I'm in town to find out who killed my brother. But then like, oh God, uh, what? The mayor's corrupt? We gotta get that asshole. So like, yeah. they just drop the murder subplot. Yeah. Because you know? that's what everyone else is clicking for and that's what the player responds to. Like, let's open a pizza parlor. Like, okay, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think the important thing there is to like, advertise to a certain degree what the game's going to be about. Yeah, I mean, Absolutely. like, the, the, the story of the game is whatever happens in the game. So like, you can't like, script it Ahead of time. Too no, much. yeah, uh, that. And but you can shoot a high concept. Yeah, yeah. You can go. You can have like set the initial tracks, but like it will veer off in whatever direction it veers. Absolutely, off. Yeah. and that's so like, you got to be able to drift in that. Yeah, direction. being able to improv with it is something that I found is really helpful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for sometimes whenever I've got a player that's like, yeah, I want to do this thing. Like, uh, yeah. here's here's my past. Uh, if I see the campaign like drifting off the course, I generally try to like. I don't provide any solid hooks, if, if that makes sense. Say somebody's looking for their the person that killed their brother. I would drop hints along the way in, in just such a way that it would, like, f- be able to follow the campaign if it continues to drift off course. Because I find it interesting to maybe, like, I don't know. I like to work with the players to tell the best story possible. Right. Uh, and I think it would be great if, oh, the mayor's corrupt. Uh, oh, his, his, uh, either the mayor or his assistant killed the player's uh, whatever. Or maybe the person that told you the mayor's corrupt killed your brother. Or right. like just stuff like that. Like that I, I always really enjoy working with the players and really screwing with them. 
Right. Like, that's, no, I mean, that, that's the GM's job. But, yeah. like, sometimes, like, okay, I want to avenge my brother's death. But then, like, oh, God, this cult is going to summon Cthulhu and destroy the world. Right. And they're doing it all over the world. So we have to leave Chicago where my brother's killer is hiding. Right. And then it's like... Sometimes you have to this, stay on the boat, Conrad Mueller. Yeah, like, you... Well, I mean, like, if the campaign progresses in a way... That sort of precludes sorry, that, you're yeah. just saying that because the picture is right behind you. No, I just... Yeah, yeah. that too, yeah. but also because I feel uh, like that's very apt. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's... Well, that's... Don't negate the premise? Yeah. What? Don't, yeah. Uh, shark fighting is an entirely different thing. Um, and that's not even learning new systems. That's just like... No, like, no, that, no. That, That's regardless of system. Um, <laughs> Don't fight the shark. Yeah, well, I mean, if yeah, that's a blue oyster cult song, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I think so. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, now we're just getting kind of same any any game kind of difficulty. Yeah. Like, what what kind of are there any other issues about doing uh, uh, learning a new system that uh, play, you've had trouble with? Aside from reading, uh, aside um, from reading, yeah. Addition updates are addition always updates. a hurdle. Okay. As I found that, it's just like I probably did not devote enough time into learning how the rules of Fifth Ed are different from oh, okay. the previous uh, iterations. Oh, yeah. And so I find my even, even I'll later catch myself and realize I did it wrong, but I'll still, but I'll like fall back onto assumptions about what, yeah. how four or I've done three, five thing, yeah. will handle this situation. Mm. That, huh. And, you know, my players haven't called me out on it, so I'm not yeah. going to. Yeah. yeah, don't they, let them they hear will this. Now. Don't let them hear this. No, it's, I, I, there are a few people that probably will call me out on it. They just haven't had a chance to play in my fifth end games yet. Sure. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, that, I mean that that's a good point. Like in Feng Shui too, I feel kind of bad because I did screw up one important thing about the rules. Uh, we all still the, had fun. Yeah, we all th- had fun, but like it was actually I, th- I think your character was uh, Ock or the big strong uh-huh. guy, right? The bruiser. And I yeah. realized no, no villain could actually hurt him because of his toughness value. Then yep. I, after the session, like, oh, I'm supposed to add this to all the damage rally so you should have been injured for damage because, once uh <laughs> well yeah it <laughs> pretty should, much once yeah uh well they failed a lot of rolls anyway it's true uh so uh but i screwed that up and so there are there are, there are those kind of mistakes that you just kind of uh, learn and now that i've learned that it, the system itself is pretty smooth yeah. um so um yeah, it, it, it's just a matter of, of uh, getting out of your comfort zone. Like, you can't just stay in your comfort zone forever. Yeah. Um, oh, but I like my bubble. Yeah, but sometimes that bubble's <laughs> palladium, and you should not be in that uh, bubble at all. Hey, you know, I had the excuse that I enjoyed palladium when I was seven. Yeah. What's your That's not an wrong? excuse. I don't enjoy no, palladium. I, I'm pretty sure that could be perceived as the intended audience. <laughs> seven year <laughs> well, like, I think it's I'm a cowboy. Years. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm a spaceman. Yeah. Rifts. Okay. Yeah. You know. Oh what? yeah. Well, I'm a robot pilot. Exactly. Yeah. I'm Rifts. a dragon. I'm a dragon <laughs> robot pilot psychic space sorcerer. cowboy. Space Hashtag cowboy. riffs. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so we'll of course have to do the Savage Worlds play through at some point uh, uh, if that comes uh, out. Uh, you, you say we, Ross. <laughs> that's that's an inclusive right. form of. <laughs> if it's a one shot, I'd do it. But yeah, otherwise, exactly. See. No. See. Otherwise, See? no. Yeah. No, we did the one one shot, and that's all we were ever going to do with the actual rules. Yeah, I'd say that uh, as far as on the horizon learning new systems... Oh, yeah, what are you wanting to do next? I'm wanting to... Well, at some point, I'm going to subject a group of you to a one-shot of Anima. Oh, yeah. No, I'll play it. Wait, is that the one that has, like, the World of Darkness-esque descriptions for everything? Uh, No, that was Immortal. That was Immortal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, Anima is the one with the, like, four-page character sheet with a full... Oh, no, that was the one that gave me a migraine to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like the Yggdrasil kind of thing. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was a Sephiroth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's... Wrong tree. Yeah. (laughs) But that's how they that's how they show how the magic schools of magic. No, I, no. If you're pre I'll play it. Yeah. You can't put that information in my brain. Yeah. I did I, though. I won't it, allow it. Just it. Nope. happened. <laughs> I'm pushing it right on out. Do you want some palladium to help push that out? I can tell you about the alignments now. Yeah, right. But no. <laughs> in addition to subjecting you guys to anima, which will require me finding the pre to subject that I us to an anima? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But uh, uh, a yeah. cipher system game like Numenera. Oh yeah. That I would hang around. Uh, yeah, I'd and, like to. Uh, but I would want to try. I would want to try to ham fist it into <laughs> how all the previous incarnations of the world were all different RPPR campaign settings. Uh, oh alternatively, yeah. you could just do it as one of the like islands in the strange. Uh, I have asked them for review copies, so maybe they'll send them. To I us have. Okay. A copy of it. In uh, well, of the strange. Cut that out so they don't think the uh, the new one that they just kickstarted. 
Oh, Ooh. wait, yeah. Tides yeah. of or is that uh, the game? No, uh, no that's they'd... the computer game. Okay, yeah. that uh, Exile. Is yeah, 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 yeah. No, Cipher System is a whole different thing. With it's a player facing yeah. thing, yeah, yeah, with some D twenty ish hmm. ideas in it. Yeah, so interesting. Monty Cook designed it. Bruce uh, Cordell. Uh, Bruce Cordell. Okay. Huh. Monty Cook's names on it. Okay. It was Bruce yeah. Cordell. I thought he did design work on it too. Well, yeah, probably, somewhat, but his yeah. isn't the first name on that. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Um, okay. Yeah. No, I, 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 will definitely play both I will definitely play bo- both of those. Um, I know in terms of new systems that I want to run, uh, obviously Feng Shui 2 again. Uh, oh, yeah. But uh, the next brand new system I want to run will be only War, I think. Uh, What's that? That is a Warhammer 40K World War. Right! Yes. I'm so excited uh, for that one. Where all the soul- characters are members of the Imperial Guard, which means they're just normal people. We're they crappy. Get, we're, you're normal people that are uh, conscripted into the Imperial Army and sent to some distant world to die. So... In the uh, grim dark future, the there is dark. only bureaucracy. Yeah, you're not you're not a space marine. You're not a road trader. You're not a special snowflake. You're just one of billions of soldiers sent out to die fighting space aliens. So it's uh, like the Warhammer fantasy games where you randomly rolled your class and could end up being a rat catcher or a camp um, follower. I think they do give you all. They all give you guns. You know, so like they're with they're, guns. With guns, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, the reason it's one of the reasons why I want, want to run it though is they have rules for uh, instead of buying gear, you have to requisition it and apparently yeah. like it's a random roll so you could get the totally wrong thing like the the example that they gave me is like oh we need rations we're hungry and then they send you a fully loaded battle tank and so the adventure <laughs> becomes how do we turn this into food like do you trade other units do you go raid a farmhouse that like, is exactly what I'm excited for uh, yeah. so, and that's an example yeah. of the system informing play Yeah, and that is exactly what I want to see uh, uh, obviously you're running Delta Green yeah uh, yeah uh, this I played a lot in it though so I don't I don't know if that counts as okay. a new system, Any but other? I'm really excited to be on the other side of it. Yeah, uh, you and both you and Caleb have done a fantastic job, and I feel like I've got a lot to live up to. <laughs> uh, and as far as new systems go, I think like just last week you showed me something called Hill Folk, oh, yeah. which yeah. immediately struck my fancy. Uh, yes, the drama, drama system, system is so yeah, right which now. is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We we have been putting that off for way too long. I really want to it's run some Hill Folk. Challenging, <laughs> it is challenging, and we have to do it as a campaign, really. Uh, yeah. yeah, it so. doesn't one shot very well. You okay. need to do like at least as you need to do as many sessions as builds. a short run of an HBO series. Okay, so like six or seven. Really. Yeah, interesting. Um, so yeah, that's that's something I want to run. That's actually on my list of to run. Too. Mine too. Okay, well <laughs> we can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Bill, what about you? Um, let's see. First, Ed Paranoia, new Paranoia when the Kickstarter fulfills. Uh, oh. Deadlands Reloaded. Um, 13th Age, Knights Black Agents. Um, it's a lot. Yeah. I, I have. have you should buy some Knights more books. Black Agents games, you want to run Dracula Dossier with me, Caleb, Jason, and Ross. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That Those was the amazing. players. Your spies fighting against Dracula yeah. in modern day. I, I still want to play Let's that. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Am I leaving anything out? Oh, I know I'm leaving out. I, I have a list. I have like a dozen RPGs yeah. that are listed on. Uh, yeah, like, apparently so do I. Uh, um, Kuro. That's actually another one just came to mind. Uh, uh, the uh, Japanese that, cyberpunk horror. Yeah. yeah oh, that sounds it's awesome. It's like Japan 50 years in the future. Uh, for various reasons, for natural reasons, it's been cut off, and like s- monsters and things are waking up in it. But there's huh. also cyborgs and stuff like that too. So like Ghost in the Shell plus, uh, plus the Ring. So whoa, oh. yeah. it's called Kuru. Yeah, K U R O. I have a copy of it. So Ooh. thought of another one, yeah. Urban Shadows, which is a uh, powered oh, by the yeah. apocalypse game of urban fantasy that I won't run until at least three years after Dresden concludes because. Why step on that twice? <laughs> uh, speaking of Power of the Apocalypse, uh, Spirit of 77 and The Sprawl uh, have Spirit of 77. Uh, that's the 70s exploitation. Not just black exploitation, but also like martial arts, trucker movies, uh, any, nice. any sort of grindhouse 70s movie. Heck, as uh, far as that goes, I backed for Apocalypse World second at Ed. So. Oh, yeah. Same, same here. Uh, and then The Sprawl is a cyberpunk powered by the Apocalypse game. Ooh. I mean, powered by the Apocalypse games are all pretty. They're all really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've been doing it's a lot hard of to go wrong. Can, yeah. And it, they're pretty easy to pick up, too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's my yeah. favorite part Feel free to ignore World. most of the preceding hour if you're playing a Powered by the Apocalypse game. It kind of does. Uh, yeah. It, I don't, that, that's, I don't a know separate, that's a separate episode to do advice on how to do that. <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. We should do an episode on Powered by the Apocalypse. Dan would like to say words. Oh, sorry. Yeah. At some point, I would like to run like a Strange Fate or a Fate Core <laughs> Fantasy because you know I've got my homebrew campaign setting that every time I try to shoehorn it into D and D, it doesn't quite fit. Yeah. So, 
Maybe something. Use more lube. Uh, uh, So eventually, I would probably like to try that. But then again, that's probably another campaign thing. Not a. I've got enough campaign ideas floating around. That's going to be pretty far off in the future. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, in fantasy, you should look at also the Thirteenth Age, uh, which Bill mentioned. I have run a two-part game of that. For what I want to do, I want it to be much more narrative focused. Okay, that, there is a fantasy game you, that I have that I would like to run at some point. Uh, Atlantis, uh, hmm. which is supposed to be closer to like Iron Heroes in oh. terms of uh, like sword and sorcery, Conan type things, <laughs> where characters have like legends and like uh, their fame proceeds and that kind of. Oh, thing. everyone's a badass. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like so. I want, I want something that will let every one be cool but not have quadratic the quadratic wizard problem right well seven thirteenth age i think solves is, that yeah the balance is yeah better from everything i've read let's see you get the whole icon thing to interact with in terms of pushing the game around narratively which would yeah. definitely work for that and then like as far as cool factor you're required to come up with your characters one unique thing yeah <laughs> Yeah, every character has one unique thing that's totally, like... You could be, like, was... I'm the only dwarven vampire. Uh, reincarnated <laughs> from a bird, you know, like... Nice. Uh, it's just a totally narrative thing. I have a it, tiny like, pebble that whispers nice. to me in my sleep. I'm a zombie dwarf head on a normal person skeleton. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> It'd probably work. Yeah. Uh, so, let's see. I know Bubblegum Shoe when that comes out. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bubblegum shoe? Bubblegum yeah, shoe. It's the Veronica Mars slash Hardy <laughs> Boys slash, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, Team so Detective. So that's the Scooby Doo game that someone was talking about on the RPPR Facebook. Basically. Yeah. Uh, I think you could do that. I mean, like I said, I need to get it. So yeah. uh, I'm pretty certain Melissa will be down for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so those, I mean, obviously there are other games out there um, that. I know I want to play and run, but those that, that I think that's enough for now. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of games. Like, yeah. That's um, enough to replenish the like, backlog if it all disappeared the tomorrow. Two only took me and up when it took me about a week to learn, but they were pretty mechanically very simple. I ignored this. They were very like system light. I mean, setting light. You learned like, them for a one shot. It's different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for can, like Dresden File, there's a ton of setting material that you have to get through. The well, yeah. the the. RPG books do a pretty good job of summarizing what you need to know, and they even go so far as to say, it's like, you know, don't play in Chicago. Here are the setting tropes. Here is... What is it? It's a, here's what... If you wanted to make that mistake, here's how you could make it, but don't. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then it's just like, you know... And they go about different ones. I forget. What's the, what's the city? Baltimore. Baltimore, yeah. They rebuild Baltimore in yeah. the Dresden universe huh. in the core book. And then they go around. It's like, if you don't want to play with Baltimore, here's how you can build your own city. Or you can just borrow from sci-fi 90s shows and just do the Vancouver method. Yeah. Nice. And it's just, you know, you just make locations up for your city as you need them. So. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it, learning a new system does take time and effort, but it's worth it. So uh, yeah, oh absolutely. Uh, yeah, just don't play the just get, step outside. It'll be fun. Yeah, and mistakes are fine. Like you make exactly. Yeah, don't sweat about not getting the it. The worst right. thing that happen people comment about it on the internet. You know, and for not us, if anyway. you don't run a podcast. Oh right, people. Not everyone does that. Okay, it's weird, right? Sometimes getting I, used to that. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I forget that. Me too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've got podcast listeners that are like up running their own podcast. I know that's what I assume everyone does. <laughs> RPPR I, is having babies. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. New tagline. Um, yeah. And by the way, if you're uh, if you're running breeds. a podcast, uh, feel free to send an email to rpprpodcast at gmail. I'll be happy to run a little promo for you before the show instead of music. Yeah, so, a little ad. So, but but how will you meet the vaporwave quota? I, that's at the end. There's always the, the vapor oh, wave at the wave end. Fade out. That's, yeah, the fade out. Yeah, mm, the vape out. Yeah, feel the aesthetic. No, the vape out is something else. Yeah, it uh, is. How do you feel about vaping and vapor wave? Like uh, vaping has disgraced the name of vaping. Yeah. it should be vapor wave. Only vapor wave. I had a feeling. Uh, so I don't. What? Yes. In the grim dark future of electronic music, there is only. It's all vapor about uh, aesthetic skull with fern, uh, I, which <laughs> is the name of a song. I told uh, what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyways, when we're back, uh, we will have... After Ed- we're done rebo- rebooting Dan's <laughs> brain. Uh, shout out to Edgar. And 
we're back with uh, whatever vaporwave I chose to play. Vaporwave. In the, in vaporwave. vaporwave. What? Aesthetic. <laughs> uh, all right. So probably Aesthetic Skull with Firm, unless I've already used that in the past. Because it's a really good Vapor Trap song uh, from PZA. On vapor what? Yes, Vapor Trap. It's a subgenre of uh, vaporwave. It's like combines vaporwave with trap hip-hop style uh, beat. No? All right. <laughs> It sounds like just the last part of the word. All right. Uh, sounds like it's just a trap. No, it's really good. It's really nice. Uh, certainly. Anyways, uh, so we have many shout outs to go through, so we should get through them. Uh, first off, I'd like to give a shout out to Noisy Person Cards. Uh, this is a card game being kick started uh, right now. Uh, they're right about, now. Right now. Yes, I retweeted uh, right the tweet. Uh, so this is from the uh, James D'Amato uh, and the other people at One Shot Podcast. Uh, who we've been in talks to to do a Red Marcus game. We've had some technical difficulties. Not the podcast, technical difficulties. Uh, no, this is true. Um, we've had some technical difficulties in recording a game of Red Markets that we're going to do crossover game, but we will do that. And I'm going to interview them pretty soon, actually. Cool. About Noisy Person Cards. Uh, but Noisy Person Cards is sort of a party game where uh, everyone takes turns uh, doing their best to role play a given character. One person will draw a character from a stack of cards, and everyone else chooses a phrase uh, or a one liner from their hand of seven one liners. Um, and then whoever role plays the best rendition of that character uh, gets the card. So it's a little like Super Fighter Cards Against Humanity. Or, yeah, apples to apples. Yeah, apples to apples. But better. But better. Uh, yeah, we played we- it for about 40 minutes uh, the other night. We, I will put this on the interview. We had a lot of fun. Uh, it was really fun. It was quite uh, entertaining. So uh, I'm intrigued already. Yeah, no. It, uh, we'll, we'll, you'll have a you'll be able to listen this to a card. This does not sound like a trap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank thank you. Well, it's not my game, but yeah, you should check out their Kickstarter. Um, it, it is quite a bit of fun. Um, so, uh, Dan, if you you wanted to mention uh, something Duolingo, Duolingo, yeah. yes. Like I got my wonderful analogy about learning a second language because I'm currently trying to teach myself Spanish. Ooh. And part of that is running through daily exercises on Duolingo. They don't just teach you Spanish. There's over a dozen different languages, including Esperanto. Do so. it. <laughs> or not. You could do Spanish, which is more useful. But after you finish Spanish. Esperanto. Esperanto. So. Okay. Put those MMO grinding skills um, you've over the does years. It, is it work. expensive or is it free? Or like what it is, is totes free. Ooh. Ooh. Neat. Uh, uh, everyone else was saying. So is it just an app on your phone? or No, it's a website. They also have phone apps that you can okay. do to do flashcard exercises. Like It also, for those of you that are wanting to learn languages professionally, it has a nice integration with LinkedIn. Okay. So huh. it can put a little badge on your LinkedIn profile saying how percent fluent you are in a certain language. Oh, it'll test you. <laughs> Not bad. Cool. That'd be great cool. if it wasn't for using LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> LinkedIn. Um, that actually reminds me of, uh, like, you know those New Yorker cartoons? Yes. And yes. They, they have caption contests on there? Yes. They're, they're people they have asked, found the er caption. Like, well, there's there, there's two. There used to be the one, Christ, what an asshole, like, which would fit, like, 99.9% of all uh, New Yorker cartoons. But the new one now is, I'd like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. So, like, a <laughs> cowboy. To, you yeah. see a New Yorker cartoon, just sub that. Wow. For, the, uh, for the caption, it will get at least 50% funnier by volume. <laughs> yeah, like people talking at a cocktail party, uh, a cowboy at a drive through uh, A pig at a complaint window. Exactly. <laughs> I'd like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. So uh, Apparently, it's enough of a thing that people use LinkedIn. I never have, but... I, I, it's, I, have. I have an account. That's about it. I don't use so it. So do I. I, had I discovered that I had an account that I didn't make. <laughs> that's not creepy at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> That uh, should go up on a creepy pasta. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of creepy things, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been listening to a couple of podcasts. So uh, as I've advertised a lot, I'm a spreadsheet jockey at work, which means I need to keep the like, you know, language centers of my brain occupied so they don't mess with maths. <laughs> and uh, two podcasts I've used to do that, uh, both from uh, Minnow Beats Whale and Pacific Northwest Stories, are the Black Tapes and Tannis. Uh, they're both horror-ish uh, one in a more traditional weirdness kind of way one in a more postmodern weirdness kind of way uh, but they're both fairly good uh, I mean I'd probably give them a solid B B minus in production values but I'm intrigued by the story and you know it's it's fun they're trying hard and 
you know, it's more directly horror than Night Vale, so it's a nice change up. Yeah, Night Vale is very... Uh, it's humor horror. It's yeah, yeah, much more humor than horror. Although Alice isn't dead. Fuck me, Alice isn't dead. Uh, it's a lot creepier. Yes. Okay. Uh, once I catch up with Hello from the Magical Tavern, I'll probably have to start listening to that. Uh, I'm working my way through that right now. It's quite hilarious. But I've already mentioned this on the podcast before. Uh, Faust, any? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Why? Yes. Now that Why, you mention yes, it, yes, he does. Uh, all right. Coming up on the thirtieth, the last Saturday of this month of four, whatever that April. Is. April. Yes. Uh, I'm going to be doing a live stream on uh, my YouTube channel, Thrilling Intent. It's not my YouTube channel. I share it with three other people. Uh, we're going to be doing a live stream, and we will have special guests, Ross Payton and Caleb Stokes, wherever he lives. I'm motioning to him. He's, actually, that's kind of the joke. Really? Yeah. Sweet. Nice, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> Ross and Caleb will be showing up on the live stream. Uh, in addition, we're going to be doing a really, really cool giveaway of some sweet Norse Foundry metal dice. They are big, honking, heavy things that really have impact when you roll them. Uh, they look really cool, too. And also tokens from Norse Foundry. Do you have these? Like, did they actually... Really, yeah. You should uh, bring them to the game next time. Oh, uh, well, I don't personally have them. Oh, I have okay. pictures of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, and if you want to get into the contest for the giveaway, uh, we're going to be playing Delta Green. Uh, as per our PPR's uh, uh, usual... Remit? Rider agreement? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to be playing... Caleb needs only green M&Ms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be playing Delta Green, uh, and the whole shtick for the giveaway is submit your favorite eldritch creature, uh, and whichever creature I pick is the winner of the giveaway. And how do they do that? Uh, they send it to 3wsubmission at gmail.com. You can write it up, you can draw it, you can uh, do a haiku... As was uh, done earlier. Uh, yes, refrigerator. Uh, that's pretty scary. Anyway, yeah, uh, send your ideas there if you want to get into the into the uh, contest, and make sure to show up to the live stream and watch Caleb and Ross die. Well, yeah, listen to them. They're characters. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. We gotta well, that. maybe that's part of the creepy pasta. Oh, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe <laughs> they'll see it too. Uh, well, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, so uh, you came up with your own scenario for this, right? Uh, yes, I did. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, totally original. God's uh, tonsils. Yeah. <laughs> God's tonsils do not steal. Uh, <laughs> sort of uh, like, it hasn't come out yet, but the Agent's Handbook, the actual like normal yeah. player's edition of the, the book. Not the, There's the free quick start guide that's available uh, called Need to Know, and that's like a 50-page PDF. But the actual game, uh, the main core book, is coming out this month. It should be coming out this month in PDF. That's awesome. Uh, and once it does, we'll have links up, and we will, once that, and to celebrate, we will start posting God's Teeth uh, the rest yes. of the month. So... Uh, that will be fun in the sun, except for our player characters. They had no, they had a lovely time. They, it I was, loved it. it. Was, it was they, they just they, yeah. I don't Me want to give spoilers. All inclusive, happy resort. endings for everyone. Me, myself, and I, I really this loved is it. A Caleb game, yeah, that doesn't happen. With <laughs> yeah. Hey, everyone what? had endings that they earned in Better Angels. Um, <laughs> that doesn't mean they're happy. I uh, first uh, also speaking of podcasting things, uh, I want to mention two things related to RPBR web hosting. Uh, first off, fuck Bluehost, those <laughs> fucking ass. Uh, they wow. were the, our old web host, and at first, like, so our people, and I've explained this on the previous podcast episode, so I'm not getting into the technical details. But you know, they did screw me over by not warning me they were going to downgrade my service, and thus we were offline for weeks, and a huge, huge pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, but they screwed me over in a new way uh, because they, uh, they on their website they say we have prorated refunds. If you're ever dissatisfied, if you always want to change, we will give you. You know, uh, whatever percentage of the web hosting fee you haven't used up yet. And I'm like, all right. So I request that because I've switched over to lithium hosting, which is great. And I'll get that in a minute. But uh, they say, okay, well, you would owe – normally your refund would be $200. But we gave you a coupon for an SSL certificate and coupon for a domain name registration. So we're going to retroactively charge you for that uh, for $75. So you, we're only going to give you $125 back. That's absurd. <laughs> that was but that's – yeah. Coupon is yeah. It doesn't mean what they say it means. Like they say, oh, it's free, except unless you leave our service, in which case we're going to charge you as you leave, so you don't uh, get yeah. So in which case it's not a coupon. Exactly, it's more of a lease. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that's why I say fuck Blue Host. They're they're shitty for doing a, a skeezy thing that's like that. That's not how coupons work. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't want to fight them. I'm just you're tired. Uh, 
just getting on the fucking phone for them. It takes an hour, like, before you talk to a human being. Jeez. Um, and then they can't do anything uh, to help think you. I think I considered Bluehost. No. I mean, up until this year, they were, they were working okay. But, like, you, you pay what you get for. I, was, I, was pay- I wasn't paying enough for the level of service I was using. So, But they were – they're you know, it's a giant company. They don't care about individual no. customers. So it's all about volume. So uh, I would like to give a positive shout-out to Lithium Hosting. Yay. Uh, which we're hosted on right now. And uh, I really want to say because of the level of service they have. Every time I've had a tech support request, they answer it within minutes, you know, within an hour at the most. Uh, and they've been very quick and responsive. And uh, the website's running very fast, and I've been very pleased with it. So Nice. Uh, so give them a look over if you need a website. We just have that awkward growing transition. Yeah. Yeah, definitely there was, there was some transition. The, my problem with lithium hosting is the first – I didn't – I, I thought I could get by with the cheap service on their end, but then, like, <laughs> n- like no, I need the VPS. And, yeah, so. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, the p- Thank you again also for all the patrons on the Patreon for helping pay. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Thank Yay. you so much. Uh, you, you're the real heroes. Uh, you're Each and every one of you. Um, G.I. Joe. Uh, <laughs> wrong, wrong meme, though. Yeah. So, uh, but getting back to actually RPG stuff, weirdly enough, uh, Bill, uh, I know you've had some game books you've wanted to review for the podcast for a while. Oh now. yeah, wow, yeah. Hey, D and D books. I've been sitting on those. We've been getting review um, copies of Fifth Ed D and D books. Speaking ooh. of Fifth Ed D and D, and Bill has offered volunteered to review them, and then because of scheduling issues and other things, we yeah. couldn't come in till now. So okay, so we've got two to talk about here today. One good, one not so much. Uh, starting with the latter, Swords Coast Adventurers Guide um, is a product ostensibly aimed at players that has no mechanical material that I could discern for players whatsoever. There might have been a few new backgrounds in there but uh damned if i can find them um for the most part uh if you have somehow missed out on the deluge of setting material in the past 30 years for the forgotten realms specifically the swords coast area you know where all the video games take place and a butt ton of the books are set this will hook you up otherwise i'm not sure what the point is sorry this is a bit vitriolic but I just that's uh, fine i mean they they publish so little right now i just want to see good things in this and this wasn't not. really that. That was, that was kind. Of, wasn't that kind of the implied promise when they said they weren't going to give us a glut of books anymore? Well, yeah, there's sort of an implied promise of quality there, but well, fool I me mean, once. Fourth Ed books. I don't. I mean, all the Fourth Ed books I, I remember reading were good. I mean, like they're yeah. crunch heavy, but like right. that's the yeah. nature of Fourth but, Ed. Yeah, but yeah, but they had all that crunch to fill the pages. Yeah, you could distill the actual quality writing to. Probably like a small notebook. Yeah. Out of a quality one. small notebook. Yeah. I'm not saying it was bad. It, like, I mean, it wasn't like Third Ed was bad about like. Yeah. Third Ed was just was like, about the glut. Here are pages and pages to justify our glut. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Whereas the Fourth Ed was more along the lines of here are some really interesting things that we ran out of space because we have to give you stat blocks on powers in our other books. Yeah. And then here are some stat blocks on powers. Or <laughs> well, and new classes. I mean, that was yeah. that yeah. one thing. Like. Yeah. Um. They had tons of really cool core classes. So, anyways. Yeah. Uh, uh, on the flip side of that, then, we have uh, Curse of Strahd, the new sort of mega adventure adventure for the year or half year or what have you. Um, which I, uh, like, I haven't gone super in-depth, yes. Uh, but what I've everything I've gone through so far, I really enjoy. It is Ravenloft. In fact, it is sort of a revised and expanded version of the original I-6, you know, Curse of Castle mm-hmm. Ravenloft module updated to fifth ed with some new stuff added on they actually brought uh the hicks pair i forget their first name tracy hicks and yeah yeah so, all right and husband or uh, whatever uh yeah i can't remember i'm failing yeah, yeah hicks, those yeah. two people those two relatively important to the history of gaming people that i can't think of <laughs> right now yeah hickman Hick- there yeah. it is yes because they do the hickman breakfast at gen con where they like send hundreds of people play in it and they all their characters all die in it like what? It's an annual Gen Con event. That sounds neat. And we can try and that, sign up for it. That and like the relating of R.A. Salvatore's Wubba Wubba story. Yeah. Like, is this a ceremonial thing? Anyway, um, yeah, it is, like I said, pretty well revised and expanded. Uh, stuff that they would like to have included before but couldn't. Uh, the production values stay in that pretty high range we've come to expect from the semi-annual Fifth Ed Adventures. Uh, looks like good material all around. 
they have frigging gorgeous isometric maps of the castle Ooh. that like if you're a typical GM and therefore into map porn <laughs> oh my gosh hide this from your wife to be fair map porn is one of the motivations of like half at least half of all GMs it's I, true yeah map but yeah, porn yeah. They're, they're gorgeous don't tell me you're not into map porn no uh, we make our own maps at <laughs> Drilling Intent there you go well that, that totally yeah. counts like right. if you're if you're into the handcrafted up, the, oh, then you're like a cam girl of the map porn yeah <laughs> Yeah, and, we are. and so what? Like, I mean, do you have a little donation button that buzzes whenever your patrons like? And, yeah. and then we put down another tree every yeah. time we yeah, get yeah. it done. Now. You have a whiteboard in the back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Apparently, there's a game on Steam that is about running a cam girl empire, and I can't decide whether I'm horrified or curious. What? <laughs> yeah. What? I'm surprised yeah. there's only one. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, fair. Um, but, point. but also uh, alongside this, uh, if you've ever read the original module or you read Curse of Strahd, you realize that uh, it's a very quasi replayable scenario in that a lot of the details of it are given by a not quite tarot reading at the beginning of the scenario. Hmm. And Gale Force 9 has very obligingly produced the Taroka in world term deck. Uh, to do such a reading with in real and, life, yeah, like Ooh. you use playing cards. You can use playing cards, or you can shell out the nine bucks for yeah. the which I the will I be doing. Yeah. If it looks cool, then uh, I mean. it it looks pretty cool, Dang. and like I'm gonna get them for a gaming prop for other reasons. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, no, I, so, I mean, does it also could it double as a function for a deck of many things? You you could make it do that like it doesn't have a one-to-one correspondence pathfinder does put out a harrow deck of many things in physical form but you can (laughs) okay so apparently dan has some feels that i was unaware of but yes if you wrote up if you wrote up or otherwise matched deck of many things uh effects to the figures in the taroka deck you could do that it's a 54 card deck Hmm. Uh yeah. I, I I'm still tempted to like make my next like Kickstarter type project to be Steel Dracula's Gold and then just like spend all of the page count coming up with like deck of many things and one of one. Yeah, yeah. One just random tables for shit. Like your peasants just push a button or just draw a card and just create Die. Like, insanity happens. Yeah. No no no, dying is too boring. Like Okay. They turn okay. slide down a thousand foot razor blade into a pool of iodine. Uh oh. cursed to be in a uh, shape of a pig and then like farmers chase you or something like that. You know? Nice. Like yeah, it has to be more Twilight Zone. Yeah. You know? Okay. Two D four right. pu- farmers appear out of too. nowhere and begin chasing the pig. <laughs> like there has to be good things too to like wait out. Right, so you like right. you're a king and then you turn into a pig. So you're king pig and j- chased by farmers. Okay. But you're, you're still you a king. You still have to get the gold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have to steal dragons. I don't know if you're a king, you're probably no longer starving. Deposed so you don't king. have to get the gold. <laughs> King's got to get deposed gold, king. You know. uh, anyways, we're getting a little off time. Uh, so it's a recommended. You would you would recommend? It. Yes. Okay. Yeah. My my Siskel and Ebert on this one. Uh, Sword Coast, Coast no. Adventures Guide thumbs down. Curse of Strahd thumbs up. Cool. Uh, also, there's a thinly veiled screed against Twilight in the author's note in the beginning. So, well, gotta go with that. Classy. Uh, yes. And speaking of dungeons, uh, <laughs> you've been playing a dungeon crawling type game too, right? Hyper uh, Hyper Light Drifter. Yeah. Uh, it's not quite dungeon crawling. Oh, really? I thought, uh, I thought it was very Zelda. It is actually. Okay. If that's dungeon crawling, then yeah. I was thinking more like Darkest Dungeon. Okay. But no, nothing like Darkest Dungeon. Uh, it's basically 2D Dark Souls three. It is better than Dark Souls three. Uh, go play Hyper Light Drifter. It's very fun. I like it. Very much. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Great review. Uh, and you've been playing a dungeon crawling game, too. Yeah. Enter the Gungeon. Um, Ooh. Yeah. I've heard about that. It's sort of a pixel. It's a more pixel arty. I, I mean, it feels kind of like Binding of Isaac, not just because Northern Lion is also playing a lot of it. But, I mean, I got used to the difficulty in Binding of Isaac eventually and got uh-huh. fairly proficient at it, but Enter the Gungeon is just a wall. Like, I believe to co-opt a Ross phrase, it is pushing my shit in. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nonetheless, I enjoy it uh, because it's a nice mashup of dungeon crawling tropes and gun fondling tropes. Nice. Doesn't it also have co-op? Uh, sure. Sweet. I don't know. 
I, I haven't done enough get gooding at it no. yet to oh, okay. inflict myself on other people. I maybe you. we'll do that. Do some uh, couch co-op yeah. sometime. Oh, I'd love to. Um, we could record it for Raylery, maybe. It's true. Uh, so Did we ever record duck game for Raylery. Yes. We have so we much post, duck game. We have posted some of it, but there's never enough duck game. Uh, <laughs> I finally yeah. unlocked all the mods for it, or all the uh, uh, modes for it too. So we'll have to do like low gravity duck games and everything. <laughs> and explodes. gang beasts. Yeah. Oh, and gang beasts. Oh, oh there's actually another game. Uh, not really shout out yet because I just found out about it. I haven't actually played it yet. Uh, but there's a game called Ultimate Chicken Horse, uh, where it's a competitive Mario Maker type game where like you're given a basic platforming level, and then every round you're given one item to put in the platform area. Oh yeah, I've heard and about then, this. Like the idea is to get from point A to point B, but, but screw other people. But over. screw other people. Over. So I'm pretty sure they named that game with like one of those secure password generators <laughs> I that guess. like rolls 3d6 <laughs> yeah. and then takes words off a table. Well, um, I, I have not played it, so we'll we we'll, I'll have to get that, and we'll have to do it the next time we do. Yeah, I've okay. I've seen it. Like a I've seen a video. It I've seen a video. Fun. It looks very good. On the uh, scale of one to Goat Simulator, how weird is it? Uh, it was way more normal than Goat yeah, Simulator. Yeah, I mean way. it's it's couch co op. It's meant to be balanced and like yeah. like play- playable. It's a party game. Yeah, uh, like Gang Beast or Duck. Yes, games, so uh, not as shooty as Duck Games though, because <laughs> you're not direct. It's not ducks with guns. Yeah. Um, I do also want to mention two other uh, fun things. Um, two books that I got recently. Uh, one is Discovering Scarfolk, uh, which is a <laughs> fuck that book. <laughs> Dan, uh, it's the more sinister Night Vale of the United Kingdom. It's an incredibly dark, dystopian, surrealist village that no one knows exactly where it is. Uh, and the person who created this book has really great graphic design skills. Created a lot of yeah. posters, book. Artwork for them. Uh, there's a blog that has a lot of this collected on there. Uh, yeah. From 12th January 1973, it will no longer be legal. Whatever you do, don't. Don't be one of those people who mistakes doing for not doing, or you could face a fine. For more information, please reread this poster. Yeah. <laughs> uh, exactly. It's just great. It's a great book to flip over and read at a random page. You know, make sure to eat your owls. What? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Eat your daily owl- allotment of owls. What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no, that's pretty much the book, Dan, if you what? want to flip through it. Uh, Vaporwave. Vaporwave. <laughs> These are not things. I, I'm 80% certain you guys just make stuff up to fuck with me. Possibly yeah. in Michigan. Uh, fair enough. Uh, but then a more practical book is The Art of Eating Through the Zombie Apocalypse. Uh, it looks really cool. It is not only a cookbook, book, uh, it is also a farming book, a gardening book. Uh, everything about like how to feed yourself, the hunting, you know, trapping. Uh, a lot of art- artwork if you want to look through. Yes. Um, it I and I got it for red markets, like yeah. to give me ideas for scores and things like that. So uh and how societies would rebuild after the fall, or I mean after the crash. And I got an idea of you could do a score in red markets of just plastic bottles. Because like there's a whole thing on like using plastic bottles, like soda bottles, cut them in half and use them as planters for gardens and stuff like that. So like, hey, they get you know, a truckload of those and they'll pay you a bunch of bounty because then they can Plant their gardens inside. Or you can, like, apparently razor thin them and weave them into super great rope. Yeah. uh, Well, I don't know if that's in there. I mean, the book is uh, focused on food. Dan's been doing his research. There you go. Uh, But there's a ton of stuff about food and cooking. And uh, there's even some recipes you could probably do even before the zombie apocalypse. And I think that's allowed. Uh, (laughs) Gotta wait. You gotta wait before the zombie apocalypse. They do have a whole chapter on how to make make MREs taste good. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I know we all got a truck pallet of those. Back yeah, I've been white. trying to figure out what to do with them. <laughs> so, uh, rosemary juice and garlic powder. Uh, yes, that that that's probably how you do it. Uh, well, there's a whole chapter. I mean, you could read it <laughs> multiple ways. Here's multiple ways, Dan. Um, but there's a whole book on it. All right. So, uh, I'm but it's something certain I just summarized the whole book. <laughs> I don't think you have. You, look at how many pages there are. Uh, a lot of pages. There are many pages and uh, pictures. Any other shout outs for anybody? Uh, I can't think of anything. All right. I actually had a couple more because, oh, okay. you know. Oh, yeah. The, the two yeah, channels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, part of my daily work consumption, I uh, watch a lot of short YouTube vids for when podcasts are too long for my brain. <laughs> and uh, two that I really like, uh, both come from PBS Digital Studios. They are Idea Channel and Game Show. Two words. Um, Idea Channel uh, is a very hipstery guy by the name of Mike Grunetta, uh talking about, like, 
deeper analysis of pop culture and it's generally very interesting uh did a very yeah. good show about uh what too many cooks can tell us about the meaning of life um <laughs> and game show is Again, a show about game design fuck with me <laughs> well you know about too many cooks right i do know about too many cooks yeah and all i've all I've it's got, got some good lessons in it yeah no, I derive no meaning of life from that. Well, then you the should meaning. watch that. Yeah, because, he'll, he'll help you like, crack no, the deeper meaning. No, what I got is there is no meaning of life. It's all just inevitable. But that's meaning. a meaning. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, it, lack, lack of, of meaning, meaning is I guess not we meaning. I guess we'll have to link to that video in the show notes. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much. No. So what about Game Show? Uh, game Show is a mostly video game focused game design oh. show. Yeah. Uh, sort of, kind of, sort of using the same tropes uh, as Idea Channel, which is kind of what led me on to it. But okay. like... It's just good stuff. I've been watching through their Games 101 series, which uh, uses Mario for a lot of illustration and really helps prove why, especially the early Super Mario Brothers games, are just masterpieces of design. Yeah. 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 Uh, Can't help it inform tabletop design. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah, it's true. Game design is game design. Uh, uh, So um, that's it for shoutouts, but we, of course, we still have anecdotes. Uh, So. Show's not over yet. Show's not, we're almost there. Home stretch. Uh, So Rose. we've been playing Armitage Files and uh, Red Markets. I've been running Red Markets for Caleb and the others. It has been a blast uh, and continues to be a blast. So yeah, Faust is in that. Uh, yes, uh, I am. Uh, what what have been some of your favorite moments recently? Uh, very recently, uh, I don't want to give too much of it away, but let's just say I got to throw a couple of hatchets at Aaron. Uh, his character, yes. Yes. And, no, and Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to throw. Did you miss that at all? Yeah. <laughs> I got to throw a couple of hatchets at Aaron's character, and I got it's rewarded for it. Uh, you were, yeah. To, to give more specific, it was part of a. For the circumstances don't matter so much. Is they your character was trying to demo how great yes. these hatchets were. Yes. So it was like a, a carnival sideshow. Like, uh-huh. look how great these are. We'll hit the fight instead of the the showgirl with the apple uh-huh. on her head. It was Aaron's character uh, without an apple because yeah. apples are scarce, and you don't want to waste an apple. Exactly. Like you can't just waste an apple like yeah. that. <laughs> so uh, you could potentially waste. Waste an Aaron, like, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, so, sorry, Aaron. Uh, no, we're not. He won't. He, won't. <laughs> he doesn't sorry, listen. Not sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's been a fun part. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun coming up with challenges for you guys. You shot me twice uh, in the leg. Uh, well, I didn't shoot you. Once but... once with a heavy rifle. The other time, admittedly, okay, wasn't yeah, a gun. Yeah, okay, yeah. That guy did shoot. Yeah, that NPC. Yeah. But the other one was a it was. A, it, was it a player or was it... No, uh, I shot a player in the leg. Yeah, uh, you, Cuddy yeah. shot you. I think Sean's character shot you or something. No, no, I shot Cuddy in the oh, okay, leg. Okay, yeah. Uh, I there did, were some, however, mis- some critical failures. Yeah, so. yeah. I did, however, get hit in the leg by a, a Claymore, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you did hit. hit you you did yeah. like by a claymore. Doesn't that just happen? You don't well, really get hit. It just happens. That's just semantics, okay, yeah. Dan. Uh, like explosives are a little. I think. I do like, think explosives are a little underpowered in red markets. I think they should be a little more. Like, I would be dead. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. I think it was accurately powered. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so there is one bit I really like in uh, red, in red markets. There's uh, killed. At one point, his character gets a lot of explosives, which oh. in the first version of the rules required upkeep to buy. But like his character has pro- a prosthetic leg and a prosthetic arm, so he has a lot of upkeep as it is. But in the re- because he got feedback from players, like it doesn't make sense. Like you shouldn't have to pay upkeep to keep grenades around. You yeah, know? Uh, they, they don't really require maintenance like a gun, you know. And so he reluctantly he was against it doing that. So like, <laughs> oh, he, yeah. So when he was uh, calculating how much money he would spend or make after a job, he's like, oh, God, thank God I don't have to spend on these grenades. Like, yeah, isn't that a great idea? You change your rules. Like, fuck you, Ross. He was <laughs> really salty about it. He did not like me pointing out how. And any time somebody defaults yeah. on a roll, he's, he's just like. Rrr, rrr, he's rrr. really, yeah. He, he was against the idea of having default rolls, like trying something unskilled. He was against anyone even being able to attempt to roll it. I'm still kind of in his camp on that, honestly. What? Yeah. 
Well, uh, yeah, you've what? got half the tables with him here. So. Yeah. No, you're Let's, crazy. Yeah. You're crazy. Two on two, huh? I see. Yeah. Wow. All right. And we're both bigger than you. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I Even can with Bill losing weight. So. Yeah. I can probably run away and like, leave Ross for you guys. So okay, yeah. I do How live here. I don't know anywhere to go. That's true. There are glass bottles on the table. Oh crap! Well, we is this the last RPR ever? Like, if you don't hear from us, send help. How is this even going to get out? It's not. We're not live streaming. They'll post it I'll, to commemorate their crime. How. Yeah. It's, oh yeah. That's yeah. And the fact that it's a podcast and no one listens to it means we'll be getting away totally no. scot free. Yeah. No. Even, police. Even, no. Even, yeah. Uh, this turned dark. Like, I'm yeah, kidding. Quickly. I need to get Tom. Another that escalated quickly. Yeah. Uh, oh, what? Tom's never threatened your life on air before? <laughs> Not that I can remember. Well, it was <laughs> probably in the first 40 episodes. All right. Um, yeah, time. probably. Uh, that was a while ago. So, um, Bill, of course, you've been running Armitage Files. Yep. Uh, and have there been any particular... I know there's one minute, <laughs> one time. I wasn't... Speaking of Aaron... Um, <laughs> Speaking of Aaron, he's just an to, anecdote factory. Yeah, he he really is. Uh, <laughs> he was attacked in a basement. Yes, uh-huh. uh, while, while everyone else split up in groups, uh, Aaron decided to. It go was during the-, the day. Okay, we thought we were fine. We didn't realize the bad guys were on. No, he's us. still Aaron. Okay. Yeah, he did still Aaron, but yeah. Yes, um, he did elect to go into the uh, basement of the city municipal building. To uh, look at some records. To Which try people to were in. It wasn't abandoned. It wasn't creepy at all. It was like a normal building. It was just okay. a normal building. It was okay. a normal Ross, building. stop justifying the erroning. Okay, I'm just like explaining the decision to like, okay. split up, okay? After right. after they had already, like, they, they didn't pussyfoot around the, uh, the mythos component of the scenario. Somebody went ahead and spent the point and ate the sanity to know that they were dealing with a worm cult. Okay. Worm people, like things. Yeah. Some oh, big colonies of worms that were shaped like people. Oh, gross. Yeah, no, super gross, super gross. And so Aaron decides to go into the, you know, quiet, dark, subterranean Basement. portion of the building. Okay, so maybe it wasn't as no. Okay, I will defend Aaron to go into the basement. Like, okay, that I feel like. Was and a then reasonable. once he found the disturbed okay, floor see, tile where in the I, tunnel, this is a, he the started part. looking around instead of leaving. Yeah. Uh, instead of, yeah, so, oh god, worm person, boop, he should go. That, okay, here's the thing, though. Yeah. That series of decision-making would make perfect logical sense, and the, the rationalization and the justification would make sense for anyone to do it, to follow that line of reasoning, to make those choices. To that point. To that point. However, Aaron would have made those choices regardless. Regardless of the reasoning. Yeah. That's why it's still erroning. Okay, well, no, we haven't got to the erroning part <laughs> yeah, yet. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> so after he, you know, spends time shining his light down into the into tunnel, the, tunnel uh, the inevitable worm thing in its robe comes up behind him and starts to do the oogity boogity. Right. Uh, I swear I did it better than that in the session. He was trying to attack. Yeah. Trying to kill yes. him. Yes. Um, and so Aaron, you know, Somewhat wisely elected to flee, but also elected to try to do something else at the same time. I feel like I to told to him it? that if he just fled, he would, you know, be able to outdistance it, but that he was putting himself in range of attack by trying to do this other thing. Here's the other thing he was trying to do. Using, I, I be, actually, I think I just gave him this one, no preparedness required to have a flask and a lighter on him. Which means he was trying to throw the flask back over his shoulder in such a way as to coat the worm colony in booze. <laughs> and then once he succeeded at that, light and throw the lighter back over its shoulder to light it aflame. In the town archives, in the basement of the municipal <laughs> building. Lots of drunk paper. Uh, you see, I thought he stood his ground and was just trying to splash it with the booze. Did, thought, it, did he stand his ground? I, th- I, I, thought, he got I, I think I offered him yeah. the chance to instead run away. Yeah. But no, he was like, no, I want to I set him on fire. Did he burn the library down? He did. Oh, yeah. yeah. He burned the library. Yep. He took some melee attacks because he missed his first like splash roll. Like, like roll to splash it. And he's like, no, you miss. All right. Well, oh, the, well the worm the, tag. The, the other awesome part here is yeah. like in, in my... You know, relatively, I feel like relatively concise reading of of the Trail of Cthulhu rules. Mm -hmm. Scuffling is for 
you know, fighting without a weapon. Yeah. Firearms is for firearms. Everything else is weapons. No one in our group has weapons. <laughs> no. No. no one has so any points in weapons at all. Yeah. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Uh, so he couldn't spend any points to improve his role. But yeah, he, he stood his ground and took attacks from this thing. In order from to- the colony of tiny worms. Took there melee was- attacks from the colony of tiny worms. Did he worms. get infested? Oh, yeah. I will leave the uh, the body horror fans among you to figure out what might have It happened. was not good. He did get tagged. He did get he, he started for damage. And then, of course, he did set the building on fire. Uh, to any advantage? No. Uh, well, well, not, not his own. Uh, he did unwittingly uh, create a distraction <laughs> by which some of the other members of the party oh, yeah. stole some papers, which they later ate. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't I, give no, us a, nope, nope. Okay. No more explanation of that. People need to listen. I, I need to. I, I don't want to say some no, Bill. You were, I, I, as a GM, I have to cu- give you kudos for the creative spells you did give us. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, yeah. We got some good spells, and <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, no, it was made. Watch it. Yeah, listen. listen, listen. Uh, after Dresden, uh, yeah. uh, it will be Armitage. Uh, mm-hmm. Although this will be season two. So after Dresden, season two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So, uh, yeah, we... <laughs> Uh, I guess that's what it for this ride. episode. Yeah, this has been a wild episode. Uh, yeah. From uh, learning systems to murder threats uh, to uh, all kinds of great, great, yeah, great, choices. great choices. So uh, this is the RBBR. This is RBBR, uh, uh, RBBR episode 127. Mistakes are inevitable. Learning new games. Uh, talk to you guys later. Bye. 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 Bye.